Well, first of all, uh, congratulations on this. Uh, the Dark Crystal and Labyrinth have been some of my favorite movies for a long time. I grew up on Jim Henson stuff, so I'm very happy to see this come to a new generation. Uh, what are your sentiments about this? Well, I'm so excited to meet young journalists like yourselves who um, who know the know the movies and love them. And I think it's been important to us as a family and keepers of the legacy to make sure the movies are always available to audiences in whatever is the most up to date medium. And one of the things we love about this release is that the films can be seen along with the extras, the kind of extras that you would previously always get in a box set or a or a Blu-ray release, you know. So now digitally you can get all those extras along with the film films. And uh, and you can also get the two movies together, which I think is great because they're real, they're they were made back to back and they are kind of companion pieces for each other, both. This is both collaborations between uh, Jim Henson and Brian Froud, the designer, many other and many other reasons to watch them together. Definitely. And when the, these films uh, were first released, this was innovative stuff. This was stuff that we were that you guys were working on to create this like it, it hadn't, hadn't been seen before. Do you think that helps um, make these timeless and something people of all generations can, you know, connect with? They were so, the Dark Crystal was such a strange movie to get made, even in its day. It was an all puppet spectacular with no humans in it, um, where my father had been kind of given a blank check by his by his financier, Lord Grade, who had financed the Muppet Show and the Muppet movies, and he he really believed in the talent of Jim Henson, and and when he was asked to do this fantasy film. He didn't understand it at all, but he was like, I believe in you. And he gave him development money to, to create an entire world. So they painted the world. They designed every, all the characters. They, they designed the mythology of this world, even before the script was, was written. So it's a, it's one, probably one of the earliest exercises in what people say world building, you know, <laughs> And uh, and I think it took an army of artists and artisans to put this thing together. Uh, from the Dark Crystal being, you know, all uh, Muppets to bringing in David Bowie, which gives you a whole different audience, a more mature audience. Uh, how do you feel like the, the two movies uh, both combine together yet stand apart from each other? Yeah, the first one, Dark Crystal, really surprised audiences in the day because they had only known um, Jim Henson and the Muppets. They only knew the Muppet Show, the Muppet movies. They were super funny. They were set kind of in the real world and with real comedians coming on. And so to suddenly take this departure and tell a very kind of dark fable um, in a in a fairy tale world with all the the real depth and scariness of a, of a really great Grimm's fairy tale. Um, that was a big surprise for audiences. And um, my father did feel that perhaps people would have liked the movie better if there was a human presence in it. So when he did the next film labyrinth, he wanted to make it a combination of humans and, and, uh, and the creatures. So there is an evolution between those two films and somebody might like one more than the other, but they're both very, very well liked today. And it, and it would be amazing if he would have lived to see how popular they became because they were a little bit controversial in the day. Definitely. And um, Jim Henson uh, uh, made a legacy of both being entertaining, entertaining and educational. Uh, how does the Jim Henson company continue on with that legacy and improve upon projects uh, year after year? Oh, thank you for asking that. You know, some of what we do is the continuation of the legacies, legacy titles, like doing a new uh, Fraggle Rock for Apple or doing the prequel Dark Crystal series for Netflix. So some of what we're doing is, is you know, um, taking good care of the original legacy titles and some of it is doing new things. So particularly when it comes to educational programming, We've done many television series for PBS, Sid the Science Kid, Dinosaur Train, 
um, and word party for Netflix. So we take the educational side um, as a as a serious part of our business, and there is where we do a lot of new things. So we're uh, that's where we're launching a lot of new properties, primarily with the kids, kids in preschool. Definitely, and you know, for a lot of uh, companies, it's either you know we go towards children or we go towards adults. For for Jim Henson, it seems like it's more family oriented. Uh, why is it that approach for the Jim Henson company? That comes directly from Jim. When he, his very first program that he did was a late night comedy sketch puppet thing that was done at 1130 at night um, in Washington, D.C. So he never considered himself a children's entertainer. He was doing comedy for, for himself and his friends and adults. And he was really doing well with that. And Sesame Street was the first children's property program that he ever did. And so his whole career was balancing things that um, adults and whole families would enjoy with, on the one hand, with um, something like Sesame Street, which was more aimed at children. Definitely. Uh, I grew up on Sesame Street. My nephews are growing up on Sesame Street. Uh, how do you feel about that reach that gener- that it reaches, you know, different generations? It's not, it's not just uh, Sesame Street, but mostly everything Jim Henson does is multi-generational. Very true. Um, Sesame Street is is just a remarkable cultural phenomenon. Having it was the first big program on PBS, and to think that it is over fifty years of doing of educating children is incredible. We are proud to still be involved with it on the puppetry side and making the puppets for Sesame Street, um, but the the educational and the sort the inter the international you know, change making side of Sesame Street is kind of driven by is completely driven by a company called Sesame Workshop based in New York. Um, and, you know, it's it's definitely an honor to still be involved with them. And how important is it for the Jim Henson company to not just be educational when it comes to book smarts, but for emo- emotional education, because that has been a very important part of you know our time right now. When you look back on the Muppets as a group, There was nothing conventional about them. There was no conventional nuclear family. They were, they might've been the original uh, found family. You know, every person, every character in the Muppets is completely unique, completely different, but they coexist. They communicate well with each other. They're all on a team together. And in that way, we feel like the Muppets were really ahead of their time and, um, it, celebrating individuality and diversity without being on the nose about it. It's just like, who are these characters? Why do they go together? But they so do go together. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Jim Henson Company, and I am very honored to get to talk to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much.